Hi, I'm Marsha Ambrosius and you're watching Soul Culture TV. Jazz Cafe UK Soul Jam this evening, featured artists, and I'm glad that I did because it just happens to be the same week that so it's beautiful weather, great company, great family, and yeah, I'm in Philadelphia right as now. Um, been there since 2009, I travel so much that I guess I live in the world, wherever I sleep that night is where I live. Okay, so the big question, mm -hmm. why this this split? Um, extreme personal reasons. Uh, after that, left the group for personal reasons. I had to respect what she wanted to do in her life. The time that poetry was, I had to respect it. I understand what it was and what it meant for the both of us. However, you don't know how it's going to affect you once you're doing it. So. As her friend, I couldn't help her anymore. And it just got to that point where it became unbearable for me to look at, like my best friend not being able to handle certain situations the way she should have, that was difficult. And I'm grown, I wanna do what I wanna do, she wants to do what she wants to do, and respectively so, had to part. And I think, well, I definitely, on my part, it's made me better. It's made me have to stand up for me and fend for me. And I think when you do have that person to lean on, it's a comfort zone. But when the person that you're leaning on can't carry you, it's, it just becomes different and that, difficult and imbalanced. That's, that's everything. When you have a friendship and, you know, things happen and it happens and it's okay. I, I wish her well, all of her ventures, what she's doing, no love lost at all. That's, you know, that was an important time in my career. Right. And can you ever see a time ever where you and that might perform again together? Can't see it. I'm not saying it won't happen, but that's how my life works. I can't really see too much feeling, but I couldn't tell you when. I'd go that extra mile for you go all the way down our skies can keep me down. So are you currently signed to Aftermath? As a songwriter, producer, yes. I never came into this to do a solo album. I had a solo song out when I was 19. WA Records through Mickey D over here, Is This Real? It was number one on Choice FM. That was, that was when I was younger. All that artist stuff was the kids. Like, I want to be Quincy Jones. My mission is to sit in the studio and create We Are The World, like for people, that was my mission. My release, was that I got to perform whatever I wanted. Flowetry wasn't about format, it wasn't about what's a hit record, what's playing on the radio a million five times for it to be a hit. It was whatever I wanted to say was coming out of my mouth. But then, with the flowetry situation, or any situation I would have been in in the group, it's the compromise for someone else's voice. I had been through too many personal experiences to put that all on one album. So what I started to do was writing for other people and getting a release to just all the negative thoughts I ever had, all the positive. It came in forms of a pop song, a rock song, rap. I could just do anything. That's why I have so many collaborations, so many features. I have so many ideas. But when it comes to creating my album, I had to kind of just settle for a minute, slow it, slow it all the way down. All the rumors, Marsha signed to Dre, she's got an album out, album leaked. I haven't said not one word though. These are the first couple of interviews I'm actually getting to do for myself. So I can tell you that my album thus far that I have recorded, phenomenal. Like I'm speaking my piece and it's taken a long time for me to be able to be just truthful for me. Because I don't have to compromise, I don't have to say, well let me give it a pop twist because this one's from Britney Spears or let me put an uh, extra eight bar because some rapper wants to get on it because they're current and hot at the time. Me, I can just say whatever I want and be comfortable with that. And I think now is the first time in a long time I've been comfortable enough to do that. And do we know when it's going to come out? End of the, I'm aiming for end of the year, but based on all the albums that I do have coming up, who knows? Like, timing is strategic in this business, so it will come out when it comes out. And musically, what it resembles things you put on the mixtapes? 
Um, not really. The last mixtape I did do, kind of, but I'd been recording so much of so many songs that I had to give some away. It was ridiculous. Like, the Yours Truly, Marsha Ambrosius has all the songs that Focus and I had done together that we were gonna give to other people, and I loved them, so we were kind of holding on to them, and I thought I'd grown too much. Like, they were the songs we recorded last year, one of which Slum Village picked up for their album, which is now Cloud Nine, featuring me, even though it was my song, but then it was, it was one to give away anyway. Same thing with Little Brother getting on Sunshine. I just had too many songs, and it got exhausting, so I figured, let me give what I used to be away. So when the album does come out, you'll know who I am now. Now what's your favourite song that you've given away? Um, Butterfly is being tough. Yeah. when I found out that he called regarding the, the song, this isn't even when I met the guy, I screamed at the top of my lungs like, no, 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 this can't be happening, not now. It's supposed to happen when I'm like 50 something. I don't know what I was thinking in my brain that I could just come to America, say I've got this tune, I think, you know, it's heavy, put it on our album, had it on our demo, then Michael Jackson hears it and wants to record it. So you don't really, I don't think I'll ever process it. It's only when I press play and realize, yeah, I spent two weeks with that man and his children and his family. We went to um, LA, mixed the records, spent some more time with him and his family. And it was, I got to do that. So it wasn't like you pitched it to him, he heard it on the album. No, we and... heard it. Everyone and their mum must have pitched something. I, on the other hand, were trying to get Flowetry off the ground. So I put a couple of records on our demo and he heard it. He reached out, but that that's, that was the bit sweet of it. Thinking that something I wanted to do at the end of my career now possibly couldn't have because of his passing. I'm, I'm just taking it as a blessing that I got to do that before he did pass away. And now it just seems, I mean, it meant more than anything to me anyway. But now it means that much more. That's serious. Speaking of my book. Um, where were you when you heard this? I was at home before um, got the TMZ breaking news Twitter saying that he got into cardiac arrest, turned on the news, had everyone call on my phone, texting me, see if it was true, and I don't know, I'm watching the same thing you are, what you want to do, call it like it was just one of those crazy moments but I think when I found out about the cardiac arrest I was scared. I just immediately thought the words, started Brian, and then the confirmation first came from TMZ. I was watching CNN, and they hadn't confirmed that he passed and saying we're trying to resuscitate, and it just got really dramatic, and I was like, they're just buying time to just try and break this type of news to the world. Um, when it did happen, I then got calls from news stations, calls from radio, Marshall, you're okay, I know it was like me and TV, the butt flies, you knew it. And it was just weird for me to kind of somehow be a part in that whole, it was just wild and it still is now. I'm um, just, oh, I said. Okay. Mm -hmm.